Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. Done. Uh, if it's your first time checking us out, awesome, what's up? I'm Jersey, go back, watch, and listen to all the previous episodes on SoundCloud, iTunes, and play also YouTube. If you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids who buys your supplies through me and you watch everything, give us a thumbs up. Um, and you've reviewed it, awesome. What's going on? It is because of you that I uh, get to eat fancy food like real Pop Tarts. Boom. Uh, if you want to order your supplies through me, please give me a call. Uh, pressure washing, window cleaning, anything, any questions, or shoot me a text. 862 312 2026. That'd be awesome. And uh, make sure to, right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, give us the thumbs up. That means a heck of a lot to us. So, uh, there you go. Either way, I want to say the shout outs this week are going to be to Kim Little, uh, Todd Earnhardt, and Wesley, my boy. What's going on, guys? Um, that's it for the intro. We're going to shorten up the intro a little bit. I know that uh, people don't like that long intro, so that's going to be out of felt rushed. That is our new intro, so what's going on? Um, I do want to say, listen to the end, because the end of the show every single week is a new code for 5% off ordering supplies, so do that. But anyway, we're here. We're back from the huge convention. I know you people are sick of hearing it. I know you are, uh, but it's done. That's it, man, ma'am. You're never going to have to hear me talk about it again for the next few months until the next one comes. Uh, but it was awesome. It was awesome. My back still hurts. Uh, we did so much running around. Like our uh, crate was lost. We had to do all that. Uh, it was so busy. There was so many people there. Ridiculous amounts of people. There was well over a thousand people. I don't remember uh, ticket sales. Um, I mean, they completely maxed out, uh, got permissions, had a couple more people allowed in. It was absolutely insane. And it was so awesome. Listen, everybody's coming up with their videos, so I'm not going to go terribly into that, but I do want to recap it. Uh, this week and uh, the one big thing that people are saying that I agree with is there's just no sides there's no like there's no crap man everybody's there it's the dog park everybody's there to have a good time and to learn and to talk and to network and uh, I'm so sorry to all those people that I couldn't talk to but uh, man listen I would like to just go out there and say this too that if you ever see me at an event and you tell me Hey, man, I listen to the podcast. I watch the podcast. It's cool. Or whatever. If you just tell me that, you have officially, officially made my day. I had no less than 100 people talk to me throughout the show and just say that. I mean, from day one, people were stopping me to talk about it. It was just, it was absolutely incredible. I totally, totally dig it. Um, yeah, if you're ever out and you take the second to tell me that, um, it really, really means a lot. It was pretty, pretty sticking epic. But for those people who I didn't spend enough time with, um, yeah, I mean, it was just busy. I was, I posted that meme. You ever seen that meme, you know, with the one dog is sitting there and he's all nice and the next dog like oh, pulls up and he's just like all tired. That's, that's what I feel like. It's so much running around for us, but it was awesome. Um, a few people that we saw, that I saw there that I wanted to say what's up, but Kim Little. Man, oh man, I haven't seen him forever. He's uh, out in North Carolina also. He is the OG. He's like the original gangster, Kim Little. Uh, so what's up to him? George Rice. I met George in person. I don't even know if George listens anymore to the podcast, but uh, pretty awesome. Uh, I'm glad he didn't beat me up. Uh, Jared Martinez with um, Samurai and uh, Aztec. Man, that dude is cool. That dude is cool. I've talked to him. But I've like not like talked to him, talked to him. It's so cool. He's a cool dude. Uh, I'm glad that he was there and hanging out in the booth. Um, we had two booths, so it just like spread us super, super thin. Uh, Wesley, I said what's up before, but uh, it's always cool to see that dude. He is awesome. He's like just leaps and bounds growing too. So it's pretty stinking awesome. 
uh, and he was like running around learning stuff. So I didn't get to talk as much to him, but uh, it was pretty awesome. And Bob Walker, I got to meet Bob Walker, um, and uh, he is got a podcast. We're gonna be kind of doing a couple episodes together too. He's a super cool dude. Super cool dude. You want to know what the thing is? The thing is, when you meet people, they are taller than you think. Like, I, I, I can tell you. So, Bob Walker, dude's big, right? Uh, Aaron uh, Chapman, who uh, uh, does, like, some editing stuff for us. I talk to him all the time, like, multiple times a week. I saw him for the first time. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? He's a tall dude uh uh george rice man george i thought you were like five foot five man i didn't know it's it's how hard in these it's the same thing with me i've had people come up to me and go you're a lot taller a lot bigger than i thought you were all right i don't know when i stare into a camera it's pretty hard to kind of uh come across as a certain height but anyway it was flipping awesome uh next year was announced too so if first and only time in the next few months that I'm going to talk about it. But um, it is going to be in Branson, Missouri next year. More Midwestern, it's not East Coast. Uh, so it's pretty cool to do that. I've never been to Branson, so it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, there's already, I can't, I don't even want to get into numbers. The amount of tickets that are sold already, just this show put people in, is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, 10 times the tickets that were sold this time last year gonna be awesome it's gonna be huge again that's why it's called the huge convention but anyway that's gonna be um the uh eighth and ninth in branson uh go to the huge convention and it'll tell you all about that sorry the huge convention.com and uh that'll talk all about it oh i also want to say what's up to jay murphy uh, i haven't seen that dude in forever and uh, jessica what's going on jessica's awesome uh anybody who can put up with where's jay is always uh, pretty awesome. If you don't know who all that is, just search Where's Jay anywhere online. And you'll you'll find it, basically. Some of the cool stuff that was at the show, too. I want to like bring this up that we've known about it because we're going to be doing potentially some training and possibly even selling these units. But there was a roof cleaning drone there at the show. The trade show was flicking just huge. It was so big, and with all the running that we did, I didn't even get to walk the trade shows. First year ever that I did not get to walk the trade show. And I didn't even realize that until about an hour ago when somebody else was talking about it. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. But anyway, that's the show. It was just awesome. I'm, I'm tired. Everybody's tired. It's a good tired. Your brain is going. And everybody kind of is focused on their business and the progress of their business and that's what we're talking about today is progress now we've talked about goals and we've talked about you know what tracking and systems and all that stuff but listen what it all comes down to is progress and all of us want progress in our business even if you're sitting there going hey you know what i don't ever want an employee or i got two employees now i don't ever want more awesome that's freaking awesome. Like, yeah, I have five to you. You have it set. You know your destination. That may change, but you know your destination. And that is awesome. That is literally what we strive to have. But I've never met a human that owned a business in my entire life that said they couldn't change or hone or perfect a part of their business. Never. Never. Because we're never happy with what we have. I may be content, but I know, man, there'd be more, man. If I could just have another one more person on route, just rocking that in, bringing in some steady income, right? What if I do janitorial, right? I'm doing like five hours a night of janitorial. What if I threw in another janitorial person? You know, there's always progress. There's always progression that's needed. Now, like I said, if you're not looking for any new jobs, what if the jobs that you do have that suck balls, right? What about those ones that you're making like $30 an hour because it's like they were old and now you can't raise them. You're trying to raise them. Or that pain in the ass customer, that person that follows you around and just ruins your entire day and makes it completely unfun. What if, what if for just a second, you could somehow make that better? And how can you make things better? Like, <clears throat> how can it be better? How, how can you change or where can you go 
Well, here's a stupid cliche. <laughs> I've used this before, so I know it's stupid because I've used it. But if you know where you're going, you could type it in a GPS and it will find you the best path. Now, we don't have a GPS in business, and that was a dumb analogy anyway. But if you know where you're going, you know the best way to get there, right? But you have to know where you're going. You have to kind of at least have an idea of where you think you're going. Because that can change, and it's different between people. So you have to know where you're going. But once you know where it is that you think you want to go, now all it is is how to get there. And that's where progress really is, and progression in general. It's, it's strengthening what you have, but it's also growing. You know, If you're growing, you're headed towards that spot. Well, yeah, right now, you may be out there, you may have one helper, and you say, you know what? I want a 10 employees. I want two employees. I want 50 employees. Whatever that is. Make your, make your goal. Start with five. Figure that out. After five, maybe ten. Now it's a whole another ball game, right? So make a goal. Make a, make a destination of five employees or whatever it may be. Now you know where you're going. And now you know how to get there. Now if you don't want employees, like I said, maybe you just want to be stronger. Maybe instead you want to raise your hourly from 50 bucks to 75 dollars you can do that but that's progression you always have to be stepping in the right direction the only way to know that is to know where you're going so first understand where it is you're going just take some time you're listening to this out in the field or you're watching this on your computer tonight tonight do this sit down for 30 minutes and just lay it out where are you going where are you going? It doesn't have to be how are you getting there. It just has to be where are you going. If I'm going to the grocery store, I'll know what best road is to get there. And if there's construction or an accident, I'll know other roads to get there. That may be a little bit longer, but will get me around kind of that, that stuck part, right? But you have to know where you're going. So take some time, 30 minutes. Tell me down below in the comments if you are watching this on YouTube. It'll count towards your uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. But tell me what your goals are. Tell me your timeline. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And if you don't want to tell me, who gives a crap about me? You don't need to give a crap about me. You need to give a crap about yourself. Write them down. Put them in a book and don't tell anybody. They're your goals, not anybody else's goals. Who cares if you don't reach your goals or how long it takes you to get your goals? It's still better than people who aren't getting their goals at all, right? So write it down and find out where you're going. That's the only way that all this will work. Any of these videos will really tell you about how it works. So figure it out where you're going. That's the big one. Now, when you know where you are going, if it's the five employees, the 10 employees, the, the $75, whatever it is, do everything. Everything that you do should be taking a step towards that. Now, there's never a time when a step, no matter how small it is, can't get you towards your goal, right? It can't get you there. You're always progressing. I mean, another. this is going to be filled with stupid analogies. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just is. But, you know, every journey starts with a step. You know, you can't lose sight of the, uh, you can't find new shores if you lose sight of the old, right? All those things, but it's true. I always say, like, if you want to eat a cow, an entire cow by yourself, it just starts with one bite, right? Anybody can do it. Uh, just how long is it going to take you to do it, right? Um, but, and how messy is it going to be? Yeah, eating an entire cow could be messy. But anyway, it's, it's late. I'm tired. I'm telling you. I'm sorry. But uh, either way, um, yeah, always are moving in the right direction. Every step that you take has to be focused on the progression. That's why we need to write it down because you need to know where you're going. Now, if you say, I want five employees in the next five years, two years, one year, right? Whatever your goal is or where you want to be in your timeline, then there shouldn't be a time ever when you cut and lay off, fire half your staff, and then you start doing more work without the intention of hiring, right? Or getting rid of a truck. Well, I had this extra truck. Um, we're not using it right now. So I just got rid of it, right? That's a backwards. That's anti-progression, that's a step backwards. That is not towards your destination. It's going to make it that much harder. If you step back one step now, in the momentum of everything else, it multiplies the amount of steps you have to take just to get back to where you were. So always step forward. You should always have that goal 
in mind, always. That means knowing your goal. So write it down, I'm telling you. Do it and just just do it. It'll be it'll come in handy for a lot of things. So write it down. Always make those steps towards kind of what it is. Like I said, eating a cow <laughs> so stupid. Or whatever you're doing. Make one goal. This is an awesome thing from the convention was uh, Brandon Vaughn, I think, was the one that said that. Now, remember, I don't get to go to all the speakers, unfortunately, because I'm working. It's just this huge, like, you know, uh, 12, 15-hour days, right? It really it is. But um, what a lot of guys were talking about was what he had said was make five goals. Okay? I like that. I like goals in general. Because I am a big tracker. If anybody's seen anything online that I post, uh, Facebook groups and windowcleaner.com community and things like that, it always has to be as like, can someone make a million dollars? Well, you open up an open-ended question, you can't really fathom the, the process or fathom the answer. But you break it down. Okay, if you have one person making 75 bucks an hour, they work this many hours. They have to work this many hours a week to then make a million. Like you can break it down into small. Just like when you have a giant uh, bid, you break it down into small little pieces, and you can't be wrong. Well, that's really where this progression is. If you break every goal down, maybe not five, but maybe just one, one little goal, a little progression, not the end all be all. I want five employees. That's my goal. But I also want you to have one goal. Like, I want to have, if I'm making $50 an hour right now, I want to have three new jobs at $75 an hour by the end of this week, right? That just means you changed the bidding this week. That's super obtainable. Like, you can be pretty bad at, at, at making goals and still obtain that. <laughs> you really can. If you want more employees, right, maybe you can't just increase one employee. But what you can do is reschedule everything so that you're loading evenly so you can see how many more hours you need to add on to these employees something but making a goal one goal and making it achievable and a small step shows you the direction you're going to go you like i said you know you're going to the grocery store you know the step has to go that way how big of a step are you going to take that's a goal now after you're done tonight tonight i'm telling you right now tonight after you're done tonight, writing down where you want to go, write down your first goal. Write down your first goal. Write, write it down. This is in your book. F the haters. F the people who... Nobody needs to know this stuff. This is for you. This is only for you to know. This is your baby. This is your business. Write it down. Your main goal your main focus, which will change. I talked to Brandon Vaughn. We did a live and he says goals, your goals are always changing. They don't necessarily need to be set in stone because goals change as the environment changes. So your goal can change, but write that goal, write one step. For the first step, the first goal to get to where you're going. Write that down. That's what your homework is tonight. Just go do that. And then if you feel like sharing, that's freaking awesome. Share it on YouTube so I can see. Or shoot me an email or let me know, josh at windowcleaningresource.com or shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. Yeah, shameless plug, there you go. But I really, really am interested in a lot of times in kind of the goals. Because here's the thing, when you do something for long enough, it starts to lose, you lose a passion. You've been there, done that, you know, you've, you've landed that job, you've done that big project you didn't think you could do. You know, you've hired that, you've just kind of done it. So it's interesting to kind of see where everybody else is going. That's really where these conventions do. They kind of let you focus a little bit better, which we did talk about focus before. But the progression side of it, put that down. The other big thing that you need to do in, progr in, in progression or to progress in your kind of where you want to go is you have to track things. And I'm going to tell you this. As a salesman, because I'm a salesman, sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource, everybody knows, right? But as a salesman, I track every single day. I go through all my purchases, all my sales, and I put them down into a spreadsheet. That's actually three spreadsheets. There's graphs, uh, so, so many numbers. But guess what? I know to the penny what I need to produce in that day to reach what my end goal is for that, that, that year. 
and uh, if I'm on a good streak and I know that I'm banking for the slow times or whatever, I could still see it all. But if, if I didn't, I wouldn't know where I am. Man, that was a good week. But you don't know really, was it a good week? If you're not tracking it, you don't know. You can think, right? There's guys that do that calorie tracking stuff. Uh, I personally use my fitness pal for a lot of stuff. Uh, and Strav and all that stuff. But when you're tracking calories, do this one time too. If you really are interested and you're bored for whatever the heck reason. Track your calories for a day. Guess first. How many calories do you think you eat a day? And then write it all down on a piece of paper, what you ate, and then put it in my fitness pal and see where you're at. Guarantee you're wrong. Guarantee you're big time wrong. One of those things is that if you don't track each time in each piece, you just don't know where you are. You can guess, ah, well, I ate good. No, I, 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 I didn't eat that piece of cake the other day. And uh, so, that, you know, that's pretty good. But you forget you had a, a giant bowl of rice or whatever the heck it is. But if you're not tracking, you don't know where you are. You have to track it. Track it to see if your goals are being achieved, to see if you're even on track. If you're even taking that step back. If you're tracking and you take a step back, that's fine because you just caught that you took a step back. The worst thing is that when you take a step back away from where you're progressing to or where your goal is and you don't know that you took a step back, you're effed, right? You just don't know where you are. So track everything. That's 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 huge to track it. Just tracking in numbers start a Google spreadsheet or something and just track numbers. Anything can be broken down into kind of numbers or progression just to kind of see where you're at. But it all kind of works into play. Another thing to do that people really do get caught up in and I'm guilty, every, every single person, everyone listening uh, is completely, completely guilty at some point. And it's, it's focusing kind of on something that doesn't actually help you, right? Because, again, we've done this. Some of us have done this for a while. Some of us are new and still hungry. But some of us uh, also, you know, lose track of uh, what we're doing sometimes. And uh, sometimes you're a little too focused on the competition, right? Sometimes you just focus on things that don't actually help your progression or where you're going. But they take up a bunch of your time. They don't actually help you. Now, not to say that every single minute of every single day you need to focus. There are people like that, and I praise you. Uh, I need to have my downtime, but I can see why your businesses are so so much more successful. Now, I've said this before, too. When I started my business, I have family. Uh, my daughter was just born, and um, I uh, you know, have a wife and I'm now a kid and all this other stuff, so... I focused on family. I wanted that freedom. People go, well, man, if you didn't do that and you just focused straight on business, would you be bigger? Oh, God, yes. Because here's the thing. It's all percentages, right? If I could have done 50% more, heck, 20% more in the first year, when I did that 100 to 200% the next year, you know, growth, that's compounded on top of that extra 20%. So every single year from there, I'm growing exponentially on top of the already created percentage. It's, it's really good, but but you have to find that happy medium. But knowing where your focus lies, again, knowing your goal, knowing where you're going, the steps you're taking, helps you understand what not to focus on. Everybody focuses on the competition too much. You know, you need to know what they're doing to see what you're doing, but it's really not a big thing. There's enough windows out there. There's enough concrete. There's enough house washes. There's enough roof cleaning for everybody, and it doesn't really matter. And nothing that the next person does, if they get a job and little old Miss Susie Smith has them, you knowing that Susie Smith goes to them means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Because you're not going to steal them from them because you're not that type of person. right? Maybe in the long run if they do something bad, but you're not just going to go to their house because you know that they have them. It means nothing. You focus and put all that effort into the wrong areas it's like hating people right we talk about how awesome this convention was with people just kind of going there i know people who hate other people in our industry i know it uh you know it it exists it exists uh in your own area sometimes and it just doesn't make any sense you're just taking a piece of yourself and feeding into that just doesn't make sense so don't focus on things because you you only have so much yourself focus on what helps you progress um, and another big one that people sometimes kind of don't really 
pick up on is the hustle. Like if you want to progress, say your timeline's five years and you want to increase by one guy. Awesome. Make the goal. You know where you're going. You can take your time because it's a, a very achievable goal with a large timeline. So say you want to increase five guys in the next year. That's tight. That's crappy tight. Like the only way to make that work is to hustle. Hustle. The harder you work, the faster you get results. Now, if you want the freedom, which I did and do, then there's certain trade-offs. But if you say, hey, I just need to hustle right now and I need this now, I'm going to work for the next year so that I can work the next 10 years softer, you know, then hustling equals progress. Hustling equals progress. You have to hustle hard to progress fast. That's just the truth. Yes, we all get lucky, but you can't count on luck. Luck is not something you make. Luck is something that happens. And if you didn't make it, you can't control it. So make it. It allows you to control it. It allows you to take the step in the right right direction. So hustle, the harder you hustle, the faster you grow, the faster you progress to that kind of thing. If you ever talk, there's there's a couple books out there, and I can't think of them right now. I should have them down. But uh, it, it, it talks about prioritizing time. So again, that way you can still hustle, but you are also able to kind of have that freedom because you're working. It's like a six hour, four hour work day. You've heard of that. You can get eight hours of work done in four hours if you hustle twice as hard for four hours. It's just a fact, right? It's the same thing. What if you take that four hours that you would have worked and you got eight hours of work, but you hustled in four. But what if you did that same hustle in eight? Now you're getting 16 hours a day worth of work done in eight hours. Yeah, it's draining. Yes, it kills you. Yes. But if that's where you want to go, like I said, nothing's wrong. You can't do anything wrong, man. It's your business. Do it. Do it how you want. Hustle your ass off if you want. Or uh, take things easy. Just push your deadlines out a little bit. Either way, hustle equals progress. Uh, and the kind of big note that I want you to take away, other than you're going to go do your homework, right? That's horrible. But uh, go do that. I'm telling you, it's going to make your amazing steps, leaps and bounds in your business. But the thing that you need to remember is that you are in control of your own world. You are. Because the world you live in, yes, you can't control sickness. You can't control all that. But guess what? If you want to make money, you want to have a successful business, you want to have freedom, you want to have all that that is entailed with the business itself, the only person who can make that happen is you. The only person who can let that fail is you. Now, I know some of you out there have failed in business, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for what I'm going to say, um, but if you fail in business... It is because of yourself. No matter what other circumstances that come into play, if you are able to hustle, if you make it and do it as hard as you possibly can, you will succeed. If you want to make more money, you can make more money. Like, uh, Pepperelli, yeah. But it's true. It's true. Absolutely true. If you say, I want to make $25,000 more next year, $100,000, set the goal. Now you know what you need to make a day. Make it happen. Take a step a step towards progression. You make it happen. Now, anybody who's had a business fail, I want to go back to that because uh, that was a shitty thing that I said. And I, I really don't mean that as a personal attack to anybody because there is a lot of times you feel like you did everything. But if you look back at your failures in life, anything, how long it took you to ride a bike? Stop wetting the bed. I don't know. Throw stuff out. The harder you, you, there was something that was lacking. You could have worked harder. You could have made another few steps towards the right direction. Maybe you had one step backwards that turned into 10. And it was so far back that you were sliding down the hill backwards, you couldn't get back up there. Where, where did it? But there, there was some part of that that you'd be able to work a little harder to get there. So you're in control of your world. I'm telling you right now, you guys know Michael Mole. I think you have heard of him, possibly. Did a little show called the Mole and Jersey Show. 
But he gave me a globe one time. And it stuck with me. I got this little globe on my desk. And he said, he gave it to me. It's like a $5 globe. Nothing, right? doesn't mean anything. He handed it to me. He goes, this is your world. And you are in control of your world. And it's absolutely true. You control your fate. Yes. You know, everything can kind of play into that. But you control it. So go make it happen. If you want progression, it's up to you to go make it happen. So anyway, you made it to the end of the show. I'm sorry that I am out of it here uh, again. It was an awesome, awesome convention. Please go to the next convention. It's just epic. If you see me anywhere out in public, be like, what up, Jersey? I'm taking pictures with people. That makes me feel so good. That makes me feel all these times that I've spent, the, the, the half an hour time sitting in front of the stupid computer <laughs> talking. Uh, it makes it worth it, and uh, you guys have picked at least one thing out. Our numbers are growing crazy for WCR Nation, so thank you to everybody who shares it and puts out the content. That's amazing. If you've reviewed it and thumbs up it on YouTube, that helps all for this to grow this thing. It really, really means a lot. But the last note I want to leave you on is I am a sales rep for Window Lady Resource that has uh, no shame in my game. But I got goals to meet, man. <laughs> if you want to order some uh, products from me, uh, water fed, traditional, anything. Man, I get people all the time that just shoot me like a um, uh, message, like, hey, it's in my cart, make it happen. Awesome. My number, 862 312 2026. It's awesome. Thank you for everything. Um, go out there and progress to where you need to progress. And until next week, go out there and be epic.